On 7th of September 2019, an ATR 72600 from Avianca Express landed hard at La Nubia Airport in Colombia. Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl and I am an ATR captain and instructor. In this video, I will talk about an accident that happened 16 months ago at La Nubia Airport near Manizales in Colombia. La Nubia Airport is located in a mountainous area in central Colombia. The elevation is 2,091 meters or 6,860 feet. The airport has an instrument approach procedure. However, minima are high and because of frequent rain with low clouds and poor visibility, it's difficult for the airlines to maintain a reliable schedule. The runway is 1400 meters long and has an average slope of 3.9%. Because of the terrain, you can only land uphill on runway 10. And when you are on final, you are committed to land. All departures are in the opposite direction, from runway 28. The factual information I present here are from reports issued by Grupo de Investigación de Accidentes, GRIAA. At the day of the accident, the temperature at La Nubia was 21 degrees Celsius, which is 90 degrees above standard, and the pressure was 0.027 hectopascal. This gave a density altitude of 8,500 feet. Reported wind at the airport 5 minutes before landing was from 300 degrees at 7 knots. According to the report, they experienced 9 knots tailwind all the way from 1,000 feet above the runway until touchdown. This is within the operational limits for the airplane. The reference speed was 104 knots, which means that the weight of the aircraft was 20 tons. At this density altitude, 8,500 feet, 104 knots indicated airspeed is 180 knots through airspeed. With 9 knots tailwind, the ground speed was 127 knots. The captain was pilot flying. At 200 feet, the aircraft was reported to be stabilized with an indicated airspeed of 105 knots. At 170 feet, indicated airspeed was 105 knots, vertical speed minus 400 feet per minute, and engine torque 33 and 32 percent of each engine. At 100 feet, the pilot pushed the nose down and reduced engine power. At 30 feet, the elevator was moved up with three-quarter deflection. The vertical load increased to 1.5 g. At 19 feet, the vertical speed was minus 480 feet per minute, and engine torque was 4 and 3 percent. At 10 feet, the vertical speed was minus 700 feet per minute. At touchdown, the indicator speed was 101 knots, vertical speed minus 600 feet per minute. The vertical load was minus 2.7 g and the pitch was 9.4 degrees. At the same time, the tail hit the runway. The aircraft bounced. The pilot pushed the nose down and increased power. The aircraft touched down with the nose wheel first, with an indicated airspeed of 100 knots. The vertical load was 1.7 g and the pitch minus 2.1. The aircraft bounced for a second time and the pilot pulled the nose up. The aircraft touched down again with a speed of 96 knots at 2.0 g and 2.4 degrees pitch up. The captain who was flying pushed the nose down, but at the same time the first officer pulled the nose up. The aircraft bounced again at the forward and final landing, the speed was 91 knots, power was reduced to idle, the vertical force was plus 1.5 g 
and the pitch was minus 0 0.8 degrees, which means that the aircraft touched on with all wheels together. The aircraft came to a safe stop and taxied to the apron. Out of the 59 persons on board, one crew member received light injuries. Because of the extent of the damage to the aircraft, the incident was classified as an accident. The captain had 4,763 hours total time, whereof 200 hours on the ATR-72. That means he was a direct entry captain on the aircraft type. This is always a challenge. However, the captain was not a novice. He had more than 4,500 hours when he started flying the ATR. Therefore, he already had operational experience. After 200 hours in a cockpit in an ATR, you will feel at home. If you experience a bounced landing, the main rule is to go around. But this airport is surrounded by high terrain. You cannot go around. You are committed to land. This puts extra pressure on you because you must make sure that every approach is perfect. So, what went wrong here? According to the accident report, they were stabilized at 200 feet above the runway. At 270 feet, the vertical speed was minus 400 feet per minute. I find that a bit low. With 9 knots tailwind, the ground speed would have been 132 knots. On a 3 degrees gradient, which is standard, the vertical speed is 5 times the ground speed. That would give 650 feet per minute. However, on this airport, the puppy was set to 2.5 degrees because of the steep runway. And the vertical speed will have been reduced to about 550 feet per minute. So maybe they were a little low on the puppy. Then, at 100 feet, they must have been aligned with the puppy because the nose was pitched down and the power reduced. However, the captain must have reduced the power too much and too early. At touchdown, the vertical speed was minus 600 feet per minute. The landing gear of a transport category airplane must absorb the energy from a landing with a vertical speed of minus 600 feet per minute. That's a certification requirement. So, why was the airplane damaged then? The answer is here. The captain was pulling the nose up when the aircraft touched down. He pulled 1.5 g. When you pull the nose up, the elevator moves up, creating a rotating moment around the center of gravity. Look carefully here. Do you see what happens to the main wheel? When the nose is rotating up, the main wheels are moving down. And this downward movement comes in addition to the sink rate. At touchdown, the vertical acceleration was 2.7 g. The limitation of 20 ton is about 2.3 g. And because the nose was pointing 9.4 degrees up, the tail contacted the runway when the landing gear shock absorbers were compressed all the way in. As you can see, most of the damage happened to the skin ahead of the tail skid. The tail skid doesn't protect against landings like that. As the name suggests, it's a skid. However, this landing could have ended much worse. A bounced landing will often result in a heavier and heavier touchdowns until the landing gear collapses. American Eagle Flight 5401 is an example of that. So, what can you do to prevent such incidents from happening? One key is found in the Autoland system of airliners. Many years ago, I read about the autoflight system of the Boeing 737 Classic, or maybe it was the NG. Anyway, this is how it works. The autopilot follows the eyelets down to 50 feet, then it goes in pitch mode. At 27 feet, the throttle levers are automatically retarded and they start to flare. And when the radio altimeter shows one foot, the nose is pitched two or three degrees down. At first, I couldn't understand why this happened. Then I spoke with an airline captain. You know, he said, 
when the nose pitches down, the main wheels move up. The aircraft rotates around the center of gravity. You remember that? This reduces the impact force. When you land manually, you can improve your landings by using this technique. But it's not easy to know exactly when the main wheels have one foot above the runway. But the following advices will always help. A good landing starts with a stabilized approach. You are supposed to cross the threshold at your reference speed and at 20 feet you start to flare and reduce power. Some pilots don't do that and that makes it harder for them. Don't make a long flare. The higher the nose gets, the harder it is to determine how high the main wheels are above the runway. The ATR is not landing like a Cessna 172, but like a big jet. You fly the aircraft to the runway, and when you believe the main wheels are one foot above the runway, you release your back pressure on the control wheel. This will lower the nose and lift up the main wheels, resulting in a softer touchdown. By doing this, you will also avoid making a long flare. This landing technique can also be used when you realize that you are about to land hard. Let's say you experience turbulence, wind shear, or you make a miscalculation. The aircraft is descending rapidly towards the runway. And you do your best to reduce the vertical speed. But when you get close to the runway, you must stop pulling back on the control wheel. Otherwise, this will happen. Instead, release the back pressure on the control wheel and let the aircraft settle on the runway. You will be surprised by how much softer the landing will be. I'm talking out of experience here. You will also prevent a tail strike, which can be very expensive to repair. And there is a bonus for you. Not only will your landings be softer and shorter, but you will not bounce. Look at this landing. Here the pilot pulls the nose a bit up before reaching 20 feet, and this results in a very long flare. The aircraft should have touched down a long time ago. The landing is soft, but the pilot continues to apply back pressure. As a result, the aircraft makes a small bounce. A lot of runway is wasted here. Try that on a short runway and you will get into trouble. My advice is use the same landing technique on every runway. There is no reason to be sloppy when you land on a long runway. Because many of you ATR pilots will upgrade to a larger airliner in your career. And this makes every runway much shorter. Okay, that's all for this time. Please support my channel by clicking like and share with your friends. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe. More videos are coming. Thank you for watching and happy learning.